Hi, this is Liz, and welcome to my podcast, Spiritually Speaking with Liz. Today, I'm joined by the fabulous Richard Geldert. Richard is an international animal communicator, a medium, and an author. He works with all species of animals, but the main of his work seems to, what I read, seems to be around horses, dogs, and hoody cats. Richard is also trained as a trauma and grief counsellor, having worked with many charities helping children and adults alike. He's worked with high-profile names, including horses at the Olympics. And I didn't know until we started chatting that you were the animal communicator involved with Geronimo, which we will talk about later. Richard lives in Leicestershire with his husband, Matthew, who is also a medium and an animal communicator. That's a really interesting episode. Lots of energy going on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they live there with their family of horses and buddy cats, and you've got a, an ex-race horse, I believe. So welcome, Richard. Wow. We've always get into Hello, that. Liz. Hello. Hi. I'm really excited to be here. I love I really... this opportunity, and, and, and talking with you is going to be wonderful. So thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. You're so welcome. So I'll just explain to everybody, because this will go on the podcast and it will also go on YouTube. Um, I found Richard, I think it was last year, and it was through my husband, Kev, in our shop. He was talking to somebody about our dog, Priya, who's a rescue. And they got talking and she said, I know just the guy that you need (laughs) to speak to. So I got in touch with you and you were just about to get married, weren't you? I was, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think we ended up scheduling, it was September, wasn't it, I think? It was. I had a look back, actually, because I keep records of all my communications. Uh And um, I thought, I'll have a look, because I've done so many, it's hard to remember everything. So I had a look back just to re-familiarise myself with with Priya. But yes, yes, it was September. Yeah. Yeah, and it was... Time to the time. Yeah, yeah. I have to say... uh, well, I'm not just saying this, I wouldn't have you on otherwise, but I I was so blown away by it, as was Kev. We were both really, the detail, I didn't expect the pages and pages of detail that you went into. I there. didn't. <laughs> I never do. <laughs> but it was just phenomenal. It was just, it, it hit so many things that we were, we both cried. And you said to me, um, Priya will give you the gift of a white feather. And I was sat outside reading this at the time. It was a windy September day. Uh, we still had nice weather. And Priya was laid about six feet away from me. And it was windy. So I have to say that. And I th- when I read it, I'm not being rude, but when I read it, I thought, oh, white feather, okay. Because yeah. that's what everybody says, isn't it? It happens a lot, yeah. But I could not believe my eyes as I looked up after just reading your words and a feather was coming down like this in the wind. It would have blown just coming down like this. And it just landed at her feet. And I was just, I know, I know. Yeah. It, it was just so wonderful. That's beautiful. So, no, it was. Thank you. And you gave us a really good understanding of her, uh, which, which has helped immensely. It really has helped. Well, she us. gave you, she gave you the good understanding. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was just beautiful. So let's mm. rewind a little bit. Okay. So how did you get into becoming an animal communicator? Oh my goodness. Right. Okay. And take myself out of babble mode here. <laughs> right. Let me just, let, it's such, you know, I'm 51 now. There's, it's a long way to go no. back. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, I had, like many people talk about that is spiritual, um, I had, as a child, I saw lots of people around me um, that, as far as my parents were concerned, didn't really exist, but I knew they existed. And I had a little girl that was with me from very, very early on. And um, she would sit on my bed, she would talk to me, and I'd have full-on conversations with her. And um, that was it, really. I was just so immersed in animals, reading books, because, of course, it was before the internet or anything. So I just immersed myself in everything to do with animals and always felt this huge affinity to animals. They would just come and sit with me. And I never felt loved as a child. 
But when the animals sat with me, I felt so much love mm. um, and it was so beautiful. And I, and I never felt alone when I had them and I always felt safe. But anyway, this girl that turned out to actually be a child that my mum had lost um, very early on in her life. And my mum had seen her and she'd used to come around her bed to say hello to my mum. So my mum definitely had that gift as well. Uh, but for me, um, being a child without the conditioning, I just accepted it was there. She was there. And so she was basically my, my younger sister, um, which is fantastic. And she's always around me now causing problems. She always gets me doing silly things. So she's probably been involved in our little bits and pieces earlier on, but it was all going a bit wrong. Um, but um, bless her, she's wonderful. And she would take me, in my dreams, she would take me to the most wonderful places. She would take me to these worlds in my dreams where there were animals everywhere and it was beautiful. And she would take me there and leave me there with the animals and then come back for me and take me back home. So and then I would wake up and remember everything. And I would see animals that had passed, uh, animals that were alive. And I was just sitting in this beautiful place that I guess you could call it was heaven or where the animals go to, people call it Rainbow Bridge. Uh, but it was just a beautiful, beautiful place of so much love. So I realized there was something else going on. And of course, talking to your family and talking to people doesn't really help. Yeah. Uh, they just send you off to counsellors, school <laughs> counsellors. Um, so, and then I, I would just be, I think I was seven years old and I got to be, um, I got to ride for the first time a pony and it was my choice and I pushed and pushed for it. And there I was with this pony and I just felt such a huge connection with this little pony of all names. He was called Puffin, little Grey Shetland. and the affinity was just huge there and and he just started to make me feel things and I heard voices when I was with him and it was like he was talking to me and then I would go back to the people at the stable yard and tell them that he'd said all these things and they were like, well, how would you know this? This is exactly his life and what happened to him. I didn't understand it, Liz. How, how could I? I was, I was seven years yeah. old yeah. trying to stay on the pony, not fall off. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was just massive. And from that point on, because I wasn't allowed animals as a kid, um, unfortunately, so it was very difficult for me. So I just surrounded myself with going and taking dogs out for walks, um, going and doing jobs wherever I could that involved working with animals in rescue centers as a kid. And I loved it being dropped off at these kennels and catteries and just being immersed in the animals. Yeah. And again, just telling everybody what was going on and helping people. And they were just baffled as to how it was happening. But of course, as I say, Liz, I, I couldn't understand it back then. No. It was very strange. And I was constantly told I was very sensitive. Um, and as children are, when that happens, there's a lot of the word no given to you as a kid sometimes for the right reasons I will add because I am a step parent so no does come in handy sometimes <laughs> but we have to be mindful about shutting children down and I Absolutely. think that's what happened to me so much that I ended up letting go of all of that that natural ability um you know unfortunately so took a long time to get back to that um and of course, as a child, we don't understand self-love. No. So how can we as a child? Um, and then, of course, we pushed away from it and we moved into a busy society and world, um, hugely driven by ego and conditioning. Yeah. Um, and I absolutely lost my way. Other than my horse riding, being around the ponies, I, I, I felt very disconnected from, from the animals for a long time. Um, and I went through lots of situations in my life, um, with, 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 with situations at home. Um, I didn't have a great childhood and I suffered a lot of abuse. Um, I went through, um, a really difficult time as a teenager with an eating disorder. 
um, where um, I really struggled and got very ill. Um, and I just felt like I, I wasn't loved. I didn't have the connection with the animals. So I headed off on a journey to feel loved, to, to mm -hmm. find love. Um, and that took me off to basically I ran away to London to try and be all the things that I thought I needed to be, um, surrounded myself with all the wrong people, people that would use me as a, a product in the music industry and in modeling, but there wasn't any love there. And I thought that's where I would feel the love. But all the time, situations, moments would happen with animals coming back into my lives and it would just feel so different. You know, it just felt so real and nothing else around me, Liz, felt real in that way. Um, I had a very successful career with my modeling and my music and um, it was really, to be honest, it was a, a, a massive traumatic experience that happened to me um, in London where I was um, attacked and had a, a really bad head injury. Um, and it was through being in hospital and having that, that I started to see the animals again coming into me because I'd been in a coma. So they were, they, they were coming into me. And I remembered all of this when I woke up again, I went back to the places I went to as a child with this, my little sister that passed. And I was finding myself in these places again with the animals. So that was the massive breakthrough for me that when I came out of it, I was like, I need to do something. The animals are constantly calling me. I've always, since a kid, been interested in spirituality. I think I was like nine, 10 years old. I was in the spiritual churches. Oh, um, really? And I was, yeah. And I'd just sit there and it was amazing listening to these people standing on the platform. Scary at first, but I learned to really just embrace and love it. So after that experience of my head injury, I got better, thank goodness. And I started going to spiritualist churches. Um, we've got a place called Arthur Finlay's in Stansted in, in England, yeah. um, which was a massive turning point for me again to go there and learn and grow. And I always wanted to educate myself, Liz, and learn about spirituality. And it just, they'd stand me on the platforms to work with people. And it just didn't, I just felt if I was doing that, why was it that they would never talk about animals coming through? And if they did, why was it just briefly, I've got your grandfather here, blah, blah, blah. And I've got a little cat. And that's all they would say. And yeah. it was like, but the animals have feelings. They've shown me this. Why aren't they sharing with the person as well? So I was like, I want to work with animals. So I went on a big journey of a spiritual awakening to find my way there. And I think for me, the other big turning point that pulled me to the animals more than anything was losing my horse, Willow. Um, I was struggling to get out of the house. Um, I was suffering s terribly with anxiety um, and didn't want to go out. But my horse was the only thing that pulled me out to go because I had to care for her. And she was having a foal, decided to, for her to have a foal. And, you know, I'd sit with her every day singing and watching her belly grow and as having that relationship that was so much more important than my human relationships. And then she tragically had a heart attack about four weeks before she gave birth. And um, she died just there in the field with me in the most horrific way. And there she was, lifeless there. And I was just like, do you know what? At that moment in time, I was just hugging and hugging her lifeless body. And people were trying to pull me off her. And I couldn't cope with the fact that I'd lost her. Um, and I vowed that day to her that um, it makes me well up a bit, actually. Yeah. I, even now, you know, um, I vowed that day to her that I would... I would help animals. They'd been such a massive part of my life that I would, I would take this, whatever it was, Liz, this lesson, this hurdle, this situation, and I would make something really good of it. And I would do it, do it for her, ultimately for myself, for the, 
the greater good. Yeah, she was like, unfortunately, the catalyst, catalyst. wasn't she? Yeah. Abs- absolutely. That so broke your heart and broke down the walls, maybe, that was like, okay, if I can't do it for any, I'll do it for her, and that's the, the way in. I felt like I had two choices at the time, Liz, without it being too deep and, and, and full on. I, I, I felt like I was either, I didn't want to be here anymore. Yeah. Um, or I had to, I had to put all of this experience into something and make a difference. So that's what I did. And Boy, you. from, I know. And from that point on, it, I just worked more and more with animals. But my biggest thing that happened was that I met a lady called Sarah Coppin and she was even more of a catalyst to animal communication because I just, just met Matthew and he told me that he had this lady coming out that did animal communication. And I was like, I've got to meet her. This is what I do, but I don't know what to do with it. It's there in this embryonic stage and I've got all the capability, but how do I make this? become my life so she came out and I was absolutely mesmerized by her that I'd met somebody on the level that it's so hard to find other people yeah. that do this yes um, and I felt like I'd met somebody on that level and it was my tribe a tribe yeah. is so important in, in yeah. spirituality isn't yeah. it very much so and I met her she said she 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 was there that day and she said have a look at this picture of this little pony. So she showed me this and I was like, why is she showing me? She said, do you pick up anything from it? And I said, well, yes, there's this, there's that. And she was almost in tears straight away. And she said, come and do one of my courses. So I went and did her courses and I trained with her. And that's where I found the confidence. More than anything, it was the confidence that I was lacking. Mm -hmm. And she gave me that confidence, Liz, because she was a real person. Mm -hmm. She wasn't this whimsical um, kind of, I don't really know how to say it because I just say how it is to me. She wasn't out there with the fairies. She was a real person. Yeah. um, And, you know, that could have a laugh. She smoked to cigarettes, but she was a real person, is a real person. And I think that was the, the, the big point for me to realize that there are real people out there yeah. that are authentic, that can actually do this. And she took me under a wing. I am, I, I am beyond grateful to Sarah for everything. And she has supported me throughout the years so much, um, which is wonderful. Yeah. Absolutely wonderful. And that's, that's how I got to, to this place. And then. Matthew said to me one, or I keep saying Matthew, but it's Matt. He'll, he'll kick me for that. <laughs> but, but Matt said to me, um, why don't you just put a post out on Facebook? Um, and I was like, I don't really like social media. I don't like to be, I know we've talked about it. I don't yeah. like to be out there with that kind of thing. I don't like to be um, accessible to people, you know, yeah. suffering with, with anxiety. It's, it's difficult to feel people could get hold of your phone number or contact you straight away. Anyway, I took a chance and did it, put a post out and that was it. Honestly, Liz, within four or five weeks, if not even that, I was just getting inundated. Um, and it has just become my absolute life from that. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. I love stories like this. I, I, don't like to hear what you've been through, but how it's got you to where you are now and how you've bloomed, how people blossom into what they're meant to be. Because we put all these obstacles in the way, don't we? Like we've been chatting about in this, yeah. in the search for, for love, where really it's the search for self-love, but we don't realize that. So the of ego course. is constantly looking for something that's not there externally, but we don't know to look internally at that point. And we just get disillusioned, we get lost, we fall in with the wrong people. Um, and it takes something big normally to happen to bring us back onto our paths, doesn't it? And yeah. it, it, it's always a funny thing I say when people are like, oof, but it's always 
I had trauma and I'm blessed for that now because I can see that that was my catalyst to start to wake me up and to start and to get back more. in touch. And, and that's exactly what's, what's happened with you, isn't it? Yeah. So I, tell I, me I, about, sorry, I interrupted and I'm getting beyond right. myself. So <laughs> tell me about, so how did it come about with Geronimo then? Tell me what happened there. And I'm interested to know how the media reacted, how people yeah. reacted to you. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Well, you know, the thing is with my work, Liz, I'm contacted so much by the media, by presenters and people that think it's a bit of fun to mm -hmm. fill a story, to have you on doing whatever about what you do. Yeah. Um, and I generally say no to everybody because I know there's always an angle that they're going to, um, they're going to make, make fun of the situation. Uh, because it's TV, you know, yeah. it's media or whatever. Yeah. So, and it has to be sensational, sensationalized, yeah. doesn't it? Let's face yeah. it. If without that, people aren't going to buy anything. No. So, um, it was very unique that this this guy James contacted me, who worked for the international press, and he seemed very real. And he asked me if I would do a communication with Geronimo. So I had a long discussion with him over lots of emails and said that I would, I would do this because I felt there was a massive point to what was going on with Geronimo in the media. Nice. And I felt he had a right to have his voice heard. And he yes. promised me that his voice would be heard and they oh. wouldn't change anything. Um, and I had that in writing. So that was, right. that was good enough for me. So yeah. he asked me if I would do the communication. And I was with Matt at the time. We were driving along and I stopped the car to talk to him. And I looked over to the left on this road, no word of a lie. And there was a field where we'd randomly stopped with sheep and three alpacas in the field. <laughs> now, if that wasn't a sign to me, and they, one yeah. of the alpacas looked at me that was a black alpaca. And I was like, oh, this boy. is okay. <laughs> I've, I've always learned to trust spirit. We have yeah. to. Mm -hmm. And this was a massive sign for me. Because, you know, how likely is that to happen? You know, that you just come across the field like that with the alpacas in. And the way that animal looked at me, I was like, I'm doing it. So I went off and did the communication. And then he, he, he struggled to find a place for the communication in the, in the national press. Um, and um, it was actually going to be in one of the really big papers, I think The Guardian or something. But unfortunately, there'd been a, um, a, this lady had just won the Olympics or something had happened and she took the story. And they didn't have space for it. So Geronimo was pushed to one side for weeks and weeks. And then I think it ended up in something like the Daily Star. <laughs> and um, so it wasn't quite the paper I was hoping for um, and to reach the, you know, who I wanted it to reach. However, it got into the press and then from there it went into the media and the news all around the world newspapers all around the world all over the the internet um he didn't he didn't change a single thing they kept it exactly as geronimo had shown and but, and you know what liz that has never happened in the media no. i don't think there's ever been a time that an animal's voice has been shared word for word in the media and, and that was a monumental moment for Geronimo, for animals to say, we have a voice, we need to be listened to, we can teach you so much. And that's what happened that day. Um, wonderful messages from people, letters, support, people were absolutely, um, they just, it was just a wonderful experience that that people like us people that believe and trust that animals have a voice to see that that was there in the media um unfortunately for a lot of the readers of the paper and and the radio stations they they created a lot of mockery around it well it's so sad to get that yeah it is sad and it's just narrow-mindedness really isn't it and yeah I can't really. believe what was being written, actually. There were so many, I know, oh, who, he's off his rocker. He's mentally ill. Oh, my goodness. The things that were said, but I was like, it didn't bother me. I was oh, just no. so no. happy for Geronimo. Yeah. 
it wasn't about me, Liz. It's not about me. It was about the animal. And he got that moment and he got to say how he felt about the government. Um, he, he got to say how he felt the government treated animals, how we need to understand not just that they're sentient beings, because that is happening. We're yeah. getting there with it. Uh, but, but the, you know, where we go wrong as humans, massive lessons for us as humans that he gave us. Uh, and I hope, and I'm, well, I know for many people, it made a difference. And for him, that's all he could have hoped for, that his life, his experience on this planet wasn't in vain mm -hmm. and that he, he had a purpose, which was ultimately going to be that he was going to pass over but he had an opportunity to have something to say about it. Yeah. You know, and it's, whether it's they want amazing. to listen or not. Exactly. It's amazing with or without the mockery. The mockery is only fear, isn't it? It's only the, because people don't understand. People don't understand because of fear, because it's, you know, it's to be sensitive. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You just, you, everything has to be linear, doesn't it? Everybody has to have proof. But I, th I think that's wonderful, and it will have reached so many people. Oh, absolutely! It, 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 it actually, it really, really did, and that that was that was just as I say, a, a massive moment for animals on our planet to have that their voice heard. Yeah, I couldn't have asked for anything more. So, so being part of that, I will always be. I'm constantly grateful to Spirit for mm -hmm. everything, everything that's passed my way to be that vessel. But to have a moment with Geronimo was one of those moments I'll always remember. Yeah, special, really special. Always remember, yeah. Then let's shift gears a little bit. And you started something that you call the In Project. Yes, I did. Tell me all about it. I'm excited to. I know a little bit, but I want you to explain yeah. it to us in detail. Okay. Well, well, the 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 in project in is about looking in. It's about looking in at um, the animal and connecting into their soul. Um, and and in was something that again, just randomly in conversation, like I have so many times with Matt about ideas being ponging around. I was like, you know, I really feel that I want to educate people on a on a on a bigger level, and I feel like I want to get involved in training people and showing them how I do this work um, and, and how this gift works for me and encourage and enlighten them so they can be a vessel for spirit as well. So it was like, what shall I do? Okay, so I'll just put out for a course, you know, that I'll run a course. And so I put out that I was going to do a course and then I spent a few weeks just writing the course books and how my course was going to be. Um, and it all came together so naturally. I was like crazily writing and typing and it was all just coming from spirit. It was a wonderful, Amazing. wonderful enlightening experience. So that got done. We put the course out. People came on it. And I, I think that was four years ago now. It's been, it's been a constant. And it, it, it's, it's more than anything, as I say, it's about creating a footprint of love. That's what the In Project's all about training enlightening and helping people to an understanding that spirit exists that energy is all around us and who we are and that we can all do amazing things if we learn the most important point of all is to let go let go of everything that holds us back as humans yes and and people come on the courses because they've got animals or they're working with animals in some way and they just want to understand their animals better. But they come on the course and sometimes they're quite shocked that actually a lot of it is about them and who they are and what do they see in the mirror and what baggage do they have and how it's so important to let go of that. And yeah. once they've worked through that, which can be so emotional for people, hugely emotional for people once that i mean i always have tissues there i will say you know there's cakes lots to drink not alcohol and a box of tissues because we get through a lot of tissues but you know what that's yeah. not that's not me um putting anybody down it, it's actually a wonderful thing yeah that they actually let go 
we should celebrate tears and, and yes. feeling emotions. And, and I always say that to them, let it go, let it out. Once you've let it out, that's a wonderful place to start to rebuild who you really are again. Absolutely. Um, with love. But we've got to love ourselves. And that's why that's what I try and work so hard at teaching people. Love yourself. If you can't, if you don't love yourself, you can't do this work. No. That's what spirit's looking for. Self-love, true self-love without ego. That is where we find that unconditional love. So so the courses are just, just going from, well, they're just massive. They just keep going. I think I've got a course next month starting. Lots of excited new people on it. And I think up to date, about 420 odd people have done my courses. Next. Um, yeah, all over the world. And it's not a massive number, but it's a great start. Absolutely. And, and they're out there. So many of them, Liz, are out there having wonderful experiences, helping animals. And when they come on the course, sometimes a, a, sometimes a blubbering mess and they don't really know what they're doing or they've come for the reasons that they de they're not really the reasons they've come for. They, they always leave so enlightened and they go back and do amazing, am amazing things with their animals. And there's so many of them that are out there doing this work now. And that makes me so proud because every time six or eight people leave that room at the end of the two day course, they're exhausted. Don't get me wrong. Because yeah. it's intense. It's a lot it's of two <laughs> intense days. Yeah. But, but, but they, they go home and they rest <laughs> and they sleep and re energize. And then they come back to me and it's just amazing what happens for them. And I always think, there they go, more voices for the animals more voices helping animals that's six or eight more people going out there that are going to help the animals uh because what can we do on our own we have two hands i have so much time in a day i can't do that i'd, I'd love to be an octopus with lots of arms but you know how wonderful it's a great it's a great it's a great movement the whole in project is doing wonderful things um, and enlightening and enriching um, not just the humans but the animals' lives. I couldn't ask for any more. And that is my key goal to keep going with the the in project. My my goal is one day to have um, our own place for me and Matt, uh, where we can have training rooms with the animals, teaching people at the base, almost a college kind of thing. And oh, just nice. just people coming from all over the world to learn animal communication. That sounds perfect. And it will happen. You know it will happen. Well, it did happen, but COVID kind of messed it all oh, up. No. Um, we actually had our own place and started it. Right. Um, and then unfortunately with COVID, it didn't, it didn't pan out. But a hurdle, just a it'll, hurdle. It'll come back bigger and better. And what we always do. Yeah, sorry, Liz, go on. Well, I was just going to say, you've had that experience now, so you know, and there'll be things that you think, mm, I wouldn't do that part again, or more of this bit, less of that bit. We're learning all the time, aren't we? We're learning all the time. And as I say to my students, hurdles will always be presented to us as human beings. Yeah. Not always good. We have to face some horrific things in our lives, yeah. but it's how we overcome it. Yes. And we can always overcome by letting go of fear. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Ooh, Priya's just come out to say hello. Hello, Priya. <laughs> she can talk to Eva. Oh, no, she's sleeping now. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. And, and the thing that I always think, you know, the thing that hey, I Priya. think <laughs> she's looking at <laughs> is that self-love is, is seen as selfish. And yes. I, think that, I think that's such a shame. I think that's such a shame. That, I love that. that people, it is though, isn't it? You know, and, and people yeah. will be, how, how can I do? So like, how can I do what you're doing, Richard? Yeah. They expect a, a manual of you go to a dog, you do this, you do that. And that's a linear way of thinking and, and spirit and energy and love aren't linear at all. No. And like they, it has to come. 
from here. Heart and, from your soul. And it must be, you know, I was thinking about this last night, thinking about you. It must be exhausting in a nice way, but it must be exhausting having, doing the healing, having, you know, having that come through, but just having the message come through when it's sad. Or, and particularly now, I know you're starting a podcast yeah. um, this year, and that's yeah. that's about um, grieving, isn't it? Yeah, surviving grief. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, that's heavy. I know you trained in that, but that's heavy mm. work. It is. To take on, on the level that you're doing it. It's not, right, okay, we sit down, grief, write down the bits and take notes, put it down, leave, that's it. I know that you will take that in. Yeah. So that that must be exhausting for you. It is. How how do you regenerate from that? What do you do for yourself, love, on a on a day to day basis or on a week basis? It's a really really good question, Liz. Um, it's something that I've had to really work with over the years. Um, my work has drained me, has made me ill. Um, has meant that I've had to take time out from my work on many occasions. Um, it, it's been really tough. I have to, to start with, when somebody comes to me and they're suffering with, with grief or they've got a very sick animal, they, they don't mean to, but they do put a lot. They do put it all onto you. They want answers. They want help. They don't want to believe what the vet said or the specialist that actually it's better that the animal is allowed to pass over. They're looking for answers and they're looking for answers from me. Yeah. And I found that very difficult. It's about, it, it's self-love, Liz. It comes back to self-love. It's about, this is my work. It's not personal. Mm -hmm. I'm honest and a transparent person and we'll tell them how it is. And it's not for me. I mean, there's always a responsibility, I feel, as a person to keep people safe. Yes. So, you know, I don't want them to go away from an experience so heartbroken that they go and do something silly or they just feel it's all pointless because they're so attached to their animals, people. They are their family. Yes. So you have to be very mindful of the responsibility you have. It, it's a tough one, Liz. I have to meditate every day. I have to stay grounded and connected to spirit every single day. Yeah. And I have to understand that I'm doing the work for them and I don't have to take it on personally. And I think for me, um, training as a counsellor in trauma and grief has helped me to learn um, that it's not about me and that there are boundaries in place. But that's taken me a long time to get to that place. It's boundaries, Liz. It's, it's understanding with empathy what they're going through, but it's not personal to me. So I don't have to take it all on board. But yet still, as I say, having the empathy. Yeah. And it's about, it, it, it's about just enlightening them and, and encouraging them to understand that whatever happens in the outcome, or if the animal's already passed over and they're desperate for a, a communication mediumship, that everything's okay. So I look at those situations as not only being the voice for the animal, but guiding and helping them to a better understanding that they can go away from the experience um, happier, more at peace yeah. inside. But for me, I have to go away. I have to meditate, re-energize, go and see my horses, spend yeah. time with my animals. I used to go out a lot to the animals as well. Liz. So I used to be out every day all over the place. Um, and I found that exhausting. So I had to make a big choice there. I had to make a big decision that actually I wouldn't go out for a while and I would come back to just doing these, this work from photographic communications. Um, because standing there with lots of people around you was always tough for me. Yeah. And lots of questions being thrown at you when you're just trying to be a voice for the animal That's, was yeah. incredibly difficult. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't think people understand. I used to do readings at a distance. Did you? And I, yeah. And I'm much, I'm much better like that because you haven't got that full of the person. You haven't got that expectation. 
you haven't got the the questioning or I, I often find that when people come for a reading they want a question answering and they've already got the answer formulated in their mind what they want to hear so nine times out of ten they're not really hearing what you're saying because they you're want so to, right because they want to hear the set answer so i i think um i would imagine doing the animal communicating that it's easier for you being away from the people but i would but you can still people don't understand that you can still have that deep connection because we're connecting to the spirit of somebody to somebody's energy we don't have yeah. to be in the same room as them we, it can happen any all over the world oh we can oh, be com- a part of yeah and and I it's energy that- isn't it it, mm-hmm. it 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 it's energy all i all I need, I mean, sometimes I get, um, it's like working with psychometry. If you, if you don't, um, some of the people may know what that is, uh, where we work with something, whether it's some hair um, or it's something that belongs to the animal, like a collar or a head collar or a bridle or a brow band. And we work with these. Um, I just need to make a link. So yeah. the photographs, the photographs are always enough. Mm-hmm. You know, because then when I go into meditation and do the work, I'm connecting straight away. Yeah. Um, and you're right. It's just universal. It's energy. We can't see it, but we can feel it. Yeah. And it all comes from feelings. Um, that's difficult for people to understand. Yeah, very much so. And, and I think if it wasn't for the fact that I've had so many wonderful experiences and so many wonderful reviews of the work, that people wouldn't necessarily choose to come to me to do it that way. They would be insistent on me going to the animal. They, yeah. People want tangibility, don't they? It's like, yes, they there's my mouse, so it exists. Yeah. I put it down and say it's still there. They're like, no, it's not. Yeah. But the energy is still there. You you understand that. I, totally. It's It comes back to that proof, isn't it, that, that people mm. want hard evidence and spirit don't give hard evidence. It's hard to give hard evidence because, yeah, we as I say, it's about it's about something that that you can't see with your eye unless you're open with your third eye to something on a deeper level. It's most people can't aren't going to get that. They're not going to get that, but they do get it. They do get it from the communications. They always get validation. Mm, and even funny. when I'm doing the communications, the animal sharing, I'm like, sweetheart, I know you're doing this just to give some validation to the human. But if that's what you want to do, that's okay. Mm-hmm. And that was difficult as well. You imagine that you work from a photograph and you send that information off to the person like I did to you for Priya. Yeah. And you just leave it with them. Sometimes you never hear anything. I don't need the validation. Um, but I guess earlier on in my um, work doing this, being there with the people, and you could see the expressions on their faces, did give you some validation that you were you were working from that place. It was real. Yeah. Now I just trust, and it, it it's that's experience, never though. Yeah, but that's experience, and it takes time to get into that, doesn't it? It's I think early on we all need that communicate. Uh, we you know we all need that validation rather. I, you know I confidence. Can yeah, I used to send them off by email and then I'd be like, check it. It was before smartphones and I'd be like, check it. What did they say? Yeah, what did they, you know, the new They never people. came back to me. Yeah. Oh my God, it, it must was... have been awful. <laughs> but it's not. It's no. exactly as it's no. meant to be. Exactly. That's that's my phrase. I always say that. Everything's exactly as it's meant to be. And it, it really is. is. It is. Now let's go on again. Oh, we're going to be a day, so I could be a day talking to you. So you are also an author. So one yeah. published book, and is it two on the way? Yeah. So I put out last year um, my um, uh, Instruction to Animal Mediumship book. Mm-hmm. Now, I did this because even though me, as I will say to all my students, because I do mediumship courses as well as animal communication, I, I always say to them, you've got to be very careful. You've got to make sure that you're very um, connected, that you're protected. And you're in the right place to do that because there's lots of, and, and th- there's not all these scary things that can happen. I've never experienced anything like that, but we can get miscommunication and we can, you know, we can pull things in. We need to be careful. 
So I did a step-by-step guide for anybody that wants to connect back with their animals that they've lost or they perceive to have lost because we haven't lost anything, Liz. So the animals that have passed over. So say I'm Joe Blog sitting there and I've lost my dog, Patch. Um, I can read this book and go through all the steps to make a connection with him again. And it's a, to, it's a beautiful way of doing it. And, and I share my stories of how it works for me and who I am. And then we go through all these different practicing, all these different um, uh, exercises that they have to do uh, to finally get to that place of making the connection. And again, I've had some wonderful feedback from people um, where they've actually got to that place and it's been wonderful for them. Uh, but it's a nice, easy step book. I then decided that there'd be a sister book to that, which would be an introduction to animal communication. Not everybody can come on the courses, Liz. Not everybody wants to come on the courses. Not everybody's ready to be around other people, letting go in a room, you know? Um, So it's something they can do in their own time. So that book's coming out this year, and that will be another easy step-by-step guide to learning how to do animal communication as I do it, showing them. Mm -hmm. And then my other book, Whispers in the Wind, which has been in the works for the last couple of years, um, is going to be coming out at Christmas this year. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that uh, is all about my experiences with different species of animals and the communications that have happened and what the animals have showed me, the teachings through the communications Mm -hmm. that I can share with everybody else. So, yeah. That sounds lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So where can people, I'll put all the details, your details in the show notes. So where can people get the books from? Okay. So uh, my first book currently is an e-book. Okay. Um, it's a very big e-book, but they can purchase that by just going to my website. Okay. Um, I tried to do it through Amazon. It was, it was so difficult. I couldn't get all the pictures and everything. It all messed it all up. Um, I have got publishers that are going to be putting the books out in a in a different form, in a paperback form. Right. So that will be happening later in the year. But currently, the ebook for the Animal Mediumship book, they'll need to go to my website. Okay. And on my website, on the front page, they'll find the link there to download the book. Right. Well, I'll put all those details as well as your Facebook details. Yes. Thank um, you. And everything else and people and your podcast details as well. So has the podcast started? Ah, the podcast Surviving Grief is it's a one-off podcast. It's not a series. Okay. Um, and that that comes out on Friday. Um, free podcast, not intercharging people for things. It's about accessibility for everybody. Okay. So that's going to be there on Friday on my Facebook page and on my website. And it will be on Instagram as well. And people will be able to access and listen to that. Um, And I'm very passionate about that. Very passionate because it's all about how we deal with grief, um, the whole grieving process uh, with our animals and um, lots of step-by-step help for people that are going through it. People that are getting to the point of knowing they've got to make a decision to let their animal pass over. Grieving doesn't just start when we lose, perceive to lose our animal, starts yeah. the process when they're ill and we yeah. know we've got to make a decision. It's hard, yeah. People, and you have to, it's about that tribe again, isn't it? We, we talked about earlier on, finding the right kind of people to surround yourself with. There's no point trying to explain to someone who doesn't get it what it feels like to lose an animal. No. We want people that get it, that understand it. So if I can be that voice for people while they sit there with a cup of tea and listen and feel that I'm in the room and I get it from my own experiences, I understand where they're going, what they're feeling, making decisions, how it's going to feel afterwards, the trauma, looking at traumatic experiences of losing animals. So let's base it, Liz. People don't always lose animals in a way where we go to the vet or it's at home. No. There's horrific situations that people have to work through and it's there for people to help them. It's a tool to help people to work through it. 
we don't have many tools like that in this world, uh, specifically no. for people with animals. No, you're so special. That's a really lovely thing to do. Thank you. <laughs> but I have to say, I see it, it, it very much so. But I see you doing a regular podcast. All the time we've been talking, I see a silver mic in front of you. You haven't got a really? silver mic. Just, yeah. Really? Been, you know, a silver mic. I suppose silver represents spirit, doesn't it? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. But, yeah. I've been seeing a, a silver a silver microphone. And I, I th and you've got the voice for it and the charisma for it. So come on board. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, you know, mate, I love it. Thank you. That's very kind. I feel very flattered, but um, um, it's definitely a massive goal. It's definitely, we talked about visions, didn't we, you and me earlier, yeah. but uh, we both have. My, my vision is, is to push myself. I have to educate. I need, it's just part of who I am now and, and my work for spirit to educate people about yeah. animals having a voice. So I want to be out there as much in the media sharing my experiences and not being afraid of it. Confidence is a massive thing for all of us. And I'm still working through that confidence, but I'm pushing myself and I will do it. That, that, that's my goal to be out there in the media, um, talking about this and encouraging people to be open in their hearts and their souls, unconditional love lizards. It's, it's all I talk about. Let go of your ego. Don't be a slave to your ego. Understand where you're conditioned in life. Understand that your greatest moments with your animals are when you let go of what holds you back. Yeah. And love yourself. There is, you said it yourself. I know the way people see it. But if we love ourselves, the greatest moments can happen. There's nothing wrong with loving ourselves. We look in that mirror and we say to ourselves, kid, you're okay. Well, you're all right. You've got this. Yeah. And, and just being brave, finding that bravery by trusting, trusting that there is something more there, greater than all of this that's around us. That's what it's about. Just yeah. love. Yeah. Love. It, it is what it's, that is just so beautiful to hear. And yeah. That's it. And do you know what? I think that's the perfect way to end this. Thank you for oh, inviting me you. to do this. Thank you so much. So I'll put all Richard's details in the show notes below. Um, his links to his Facebook, Instagram, websites, details of the books, everything. I'll put the separate links to make it easy. Richard, you've been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so Thank you. much for joining me. And I will speak to you again soon. I I'll, I'll look forward to take care and give my love to Priya. I will. She's right here. Um, thank you. Bye. Take care, Liz. Thank you. Bye.